Hola, you amazing artist, and welcome to the studio. Today I'm gonna to talk about making your studio awesome. Now the truth is, no matter where you are right now in your art career, whether you are in a corner of a cluttered garage and you have something called Dirt Pit Studios, that's basically where I started. That's where I produced a lot of the first pieces that I worked on. This whole idea of having an entire room dedicated to my art, just wasn't a reality. And then we moved into the Sunflower House and now we have our studio. There are a few things that I keep in mind when it comes to the studio and just making it comfortable for me. You gotta realize as an artist, you're gonna spend a lot of time working in your studio, working on artwork, sometimes hours, sometimes days, sometimes months, you know, it depends on what it is that you're working on, but you could spend a lot of time in there. It's very, very important that you keep that in mind when you are designing your studio. When you look around our studio, you're gonna notice that there is a bunch of stuff. It's just filled with stuff and honestly it's stuff from our journey as artists our journey in life things that uh, really talk about what the adventure is that we've had little tidbits like tags and stuff from events that we got invited to places that we spoke at um, awards and things like that that we've won the signs that i started out with when i started to show my artwork it's almost like a time capsule that captures like our life in a different moment's different outstanding moments in our life. And it's something that just inspires creativity for us. You wanna have a space that when you look around, you feel inspired, you feel creative. Even if it's a desk in a corner of your room, put up some posters or paintings or something that's gonna make you feel good. Something that instead of looking at a blank wall, you're looking at something that is going to inspire you. The other thing, and I've talked about this before, is you wanna set up the space where all you gotta do is sit down, right? The less steps that there are for you to get started working, the easier it is for you to get started working. A lot of you guys will tell me that there are times where like you get into studio or like you don't you don't even feel motivated to get started because it just feels like, ugh, now I gotta do this thing or I just went to work and now I'm gonna go home and blah, 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 blah. If you set it up in a way where it's like, first I gotta do this, then I gotta do this, then I gotta do this other thing. Anything that's more than one step to get started started is already too much. If you don't have like an artist studio, set up a desk where you could leave your paintings, cover up your paints, and basically all you have to do is sit down and get started. One of the other things that I discovered recently was for years I've been doing this art thing and my studios have always had a lot of work surfaces. We move into this house and it's gorgeous and we set up our studio and the studio is perfect and I used a lot of the workbenches that I built back in the day and it's a bigger space, so I'm thinking like, this is gonna be amazing, and it is amazing, and it's amazing to look at and even be in here, but then when it came down to doing the work, for some reason I was like avoiding coming into the studio and working on stuff. When I sat down and I really thought about it, when I observed myself working, I realized that I didn't have enough surfaces to work on. I am somebody who works on flat surfaces. I like having lots of surfaces to be able to work on different projects, be able to walk over and not reset the space. I was avoiding the studio because if I got started on more than one project, um, there was a lot of having to move things around and organize things in order to get started on said project. Take a look at the way that you like to work or get in the studio and start working and think to yourself like, what's missing here? And then go ahead and find ways to fill it in. I like building stuff, I like taking things apart. So instead of like going out and buying like expensive things, right? Cause like I'd much rather spend my, my money on art supplies and things like that instead of like buying like these expensive like artist work surfaces. So this tabletop we found for like $35, uh, not just the tabletop, it was the full table. And then I built it to be able to store things underneath. And obviously like this rolling cart that I kind of put together from a laundry cart. So that's one of the surfaces that I built. And then we found this really cool table. I'm still in the process of building this one, but this one has the leaves that fold down and then I'm gonna put more shelves underneath. Um, so this gives me that surface. And then um, found this table for 20 bucks and 
I have bought these components on Amazon. And look at this, you guys. It's a it's an old drafting table that I found at the secondhand store for two bucks. <laughs> That's the thing about my studio is that my studio is kind of like thrown together and it, I love it that way. When it comes to my studio, I don't want things to be just good enough. I want them to be what I want them to be. And I like building the stuff because I realize my studio is always going to be in flux. It's always going to be in flow. Things are going to be moving around. Things are going to be building. I'm going to be getting more supplies and like adding shelves. Something that may have worked for you before may not work anymore. When I walk in through that door, do I allow creativity to take over? The other thing that is very important is lighting. You want to have lots of lighting. Now for me, I just get work lamps, you know, that are cheaper and I'm able to like plug them in and put them everywhere and stuff like that. And it's perfect because in this studio, I rewired things. So everything is on one circuit with a light switch that I could turn on and off. So it's just, I mean, I can tell you how awesome. Want to make sure that areas are well lit, that you're not like straining your eyes or that the coloration is weird. You know, you want to use daylight bulbs in your studio. So lighting the space and obviously natural lighting. Now we're in a basement, so we get we get a little bit of lighting coming in through the windows, but it's not enough to like light the space. We went over to a friend's studio that she had built and she has these this big window that has like lighting that comes in and she knows where the sun is and all that stuff. And it's just, it's beautiful. So if you do have lighting, use the lighting. Make sure that you get like curtains, sheer curtains or stuff like that so that you can really control the lighting the way that you want it in the studio. The other thing is making sure that you pay attention to ventilation um, in your studio, air circulation. You don't want things to get stagnant. You know, that was a challenge for us here and it's nice that like everything is very opened up and we're able to really ventilate stuff. And we also have a dehumidifier. You wanna control the humidity in your studio, uh, which is very important, especially for drying times. That's something that has always been one of those struggles. It's surprising how long something will take to dry when your studio is humid. And then the other thing is technology get the tools that you need and in the beginning like there might not be the finances for the tools but make the room for said tool it's okay if you don't have it yet just plan for it make do with what you have get started where you are with what you have like i said you know dirt pit studios and now it's you know not dirt pit studios i think one of the most important things i could tell you about your space is that when you get into your space whatever it is whether it's a desk in the corner of your room or it is a studio leave the bullshit out of that space. Make your creative space your happy place. You're the one that brings the emotions and feelings into your studio, so be very aware of what kind of emotions and feelings you're bringing into your studio because you want it to be something that motivates you to create. You want it to be something that is empowering. You want it to be something that when you get in your studio, you're like, F yeah, I'm going to do this thing. So yeah, off the top of my head, that's uh, what I could think of as far as the studio. Obviously, I'm thinking about that now because I just recently built these tables to make my space feel comfortable at home, like a warm hug. That's what my studio feels like. And I know I didn't cover everything, so I'm curious to know, what is the most important thing for you when you get into your studio? Um, whether it's a piece of equipment, your setup, or just a thought, a feeling, understanding that like, this is the way that I wanna feel when I get in my studio, or anything, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. And just a quick announcement, obviously we are done uh, transferring the channels over here. You may not have seen the original video where I said that we would be posting two videos a day, a video and a podcast, a video and a podcast. So that's all done. So if, for any of you that got used to seeing two videos a day, that's definitely not gonna happen. We don't have time. We, we have a, an art studio to run, so we don't have time to be filming two videos a day. But um, we are back to our regularly scheduled programming as we still figure out ways to simplify and declutter our lives. That is our mission for 2023. We decided that this year we we're gonna pull away from a lot of like events and different things that we've done so that we could really, now that we have this new house, really focus on 
where it is that we want to go and move forward. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And other than that, I will talk to you later. I've, I am excited to get in my studio. So, adios.